Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. This is Upfront on ENCA. We start with the story about the Competition Commission and their attempts to go after banks that colluded to fix the price of the rent. And Devin Murugan, you're watching this. This is a story from a few years back and the Competition Commission now seeking to act and to clear obstacles, I understand, uh, in the way of them um, you know, getting to these banks that colluded in fixing the price of the rent. Now you're quite, uh, you're quite right. I mean, this involves billions of rands, if not billions of dollars to us. And uh, yet really, the Competition Commission beginning investigating a case of the rand exchange rate manipulation in 2015. Now, here's the background. It found that at the beginning of 2007, several banks had a general agreement to collude on prices for bids, offers, and bid offer spreads in currency trading involving the U.S. dollar and the rand. Huge fines were imposed on the banks by the Competition Commission following that investigation. But the Competition Tribunal has been unable to impose fines on offending foreign banks because it does not have the jurisdiction. Now, the Competition Commission is looking for a way to uh, prosecute those foreign banks. Tembi Nkosi Bonakele is the Commissioner of the Competition Commission. He joins us now for more. Commissioner, thanks very much indeed for coming in. So, uh, as I understand it, it's really an issue of the declaratory order. The foreign banks are saying, hang on, we're not accepting the declaratory order. You want something different. What is it? That's correct, yeah. So we, we prosecuted the banks before the tribunal. Foreign banks uh, then came and said, uh, we, we are not present in South Africa. The conduct also didn't occur here. It occurred only in, in, in New York, which is a foreign jurisdiction. You can't touch us. Uh, the tribunal said that the commission can pursue them but cannot uh, get a fine from them, can only get a declaratory order. In, our, in other words, just a confirmation uh, that they were involved in this conduct. So uh, we were not uh, so happy with that because we want both the declaratory order and the fine. The banks were not happy as well, on the other hand, because they don't even want the de declaratory order. So they, they appealed uh, to the Competition Appeal Court, uh, and we therefore uh, participated in those appeal proceedings. We also crossed appeal. Uh, so we've just had uh, the hearing now at the Competition Appeal Court where uh, we argued very strongly that uh, if someone is involved in a conduct that affects South African consumers, wherever that person may be, uh, the jurisdiction of South African authorities should be able to extend extraterritorially to, to protect South African consumers. Now, just for context before we go even further, just give us the magnitude, and if we can quantify this, what exactly happened with this manipulation and the roles played by both local and foreign banks here? Uh, can we attach some sort of quantity to it? Uh, I, I would be reluctant to do uh, it now uh, because that's also uh, a matter of uh, evidence yep. uh, that uh, we, we should be presenting before court. Uh, but I can assure you that uh, we have all of that evidence. Uh, in other words, we are able to quantify uh, what the impact of this was. Uh, on the on the rent itself, we are able to quantify uh, the amounts that were were involved to se to a certain extent, uh, and all of that detail will come out once the case is heard before the courts. Okay. So we we say that the banks were involved in colluding on the price for bids and so forth, and that that could go steep into the billions of rands, if not billions of dollars. We've had local banks been implicated. We've also had settlements. I mean, just City Bank, for example, just under 70 million rand in settlements. Does that settlement by some of the local banks uh, mean that, look, it's hands off now, or are you still pursuing? Uh, we, we are still pursuing. Uh, there are local banks that uh, uh, we are pursuing. Uh, there is a dispute uh, that is going to the Constitutional Court with uh, one of them, Standard Bank uh, in particular, uh, about the extent of uh, their involvement, which they are, they are disputing. Uh, so there are, there, are, there are local banks that are involved, uh, and we are running uh, those cases uh, simultaneously with the, with the foreign bank uh, uh, issues. Commissioner, in August this year, we had the Reserve Bank and the National National Treasury yeah, answer a question in Parliament saying that they found no evidence as far as they are concerned on currency manipulation in our South African banks. Now just talk to me about how that remark in any way affects your investigation. Well, as I understand, what they said is that they have not seen the evidence. So in other words, they, are, they too have to wait 
for the court process. So uh, the difficulty we have is, you know, we, we have to run the case in court. Uh, and we've not been able to run the case in court because of all of these technical objections about jurisdiction, about the extent to which uh, we have disclosed our, our case to the banks. Uh, so until all of those are sorted out, I'm afraid we all have to wait a little bit before that evidence is presented. What sort of fines are you looking at for the international players here? Well, uh, the, the, the fines uh, in terms of the Competition Act can go up to 10% uh, of the turnover. Uh, so that is the, the, the affected uh, uh, turnover. In other words, that trading uh, business uh, involving the rent. So uh, it's going to vary because other banks are, are, are trading much larger volumes of our currency than others. And, and we will only know that detail once we get their numbers. I want to quote some of the banks uh, here. I mean, just a, a general quote where they say the Commission's case is somewhat vague, quote unquote. I mean, going forward, does that give you confidence that you can win this thing? We, we're quite confident. We wouldn't prosecute yep. uh, if we, we, we were not confident that we have a, we have a winnable case. Uh, so, I mean, it's quite curious that we are not getting into the case. We, we have all of these preliminary skirmishes uh, without getting into that. I'm quite keen myself that uh, we get the opportunity to present what we have, uh, and they also get the opportunity to answer uh, to that. But. We won't be able to do that until all of these matters around jurisdiction uh, and, and other technical difficulties are resolved. And as I close, Commissioner, again, I just want to just sort of retrace exactly, typically, what would happen with these arrangements. So you have a forex trader in one bank. What does he or she do uh, that would seem somewhat uh, irregular in this particular instance? Okay, so here what we are alleging is that they, 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 there is a conspiracy that involves all the banks yeah. and they would notify each other for an example where there is a big order that's coming for 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 a currency uh, and and so that others also adjust their their behavior so they don't don't all push up the demand at the same time uh, or sometimes they would manipulate uh, the rent around a, a particular time so there's a particular time where all the trade trading uh, takes place uh, and they would know at that time what volumes are going to be uh, to be coming uh, and there's a system that they all use uh, once they get into the dealer room uh, they used that system to essentially manipulate their behavior which in turn affected the, the the value of the of the currencies they were trading and finally the most immediate favorable outcome for you now as a next step what would it be that we have jurisdiction over manipulation of currency wherever it may happen in the world and that jurisdiction would enable us to find anybody who is found guilty to have done so. Commissioner, thanks very much indeed for coming in. Timber Nkosi Bonakele, the Commissioner of the Competition Commission and uh, that's where we leave it for now to listen.